Hi guys. Now the tool of the volume. The tool of the volume. Not sure. We are good. Our people. We're here. Everyone sorry for the delay. It's been a struggle. I don't know whether people can hear us. And if I did it the other stream. I'm so happy right now. Why are you so happy? <laughs> because we won the Champions League. So for those of you out there that are a soccer fan, I'm a huge Manchester City fan. We just won the Champions League for the first time ever. And uh, it was not a pretty match. But we won thanks to Lukaku being absolutely inept. So I'm very grateful for that. Is there anybody in here? Yeah, there's a few people in here. Can you guys hear us okay? Please let us know in the comments below. Sorry, the other stream that we scheduled, we are trying to remove it today. So that you don't get confused. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Wow, Manchester City mm -hmm. champions. Hi guys, who are you guys watching from? Manchester City guys who are celebrating like him. <laughs> <I'm so laughs> I was there struggling. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. Someone is so happy. Please let us know if you can hear us as well. Let me join here so that you can see the comments below. In fact, let me go to my phone. Let me also try. My phone is here. Okay. I, I want to see some of the questions as well. Okay. So. Guys, how are you all doing? Good evening. How is your weekend? How are you spending your weekend? Where are you watching us from? Please, let's catch up a little bit. We're super excited. We're making this more consistent. Last weekend, we did one live stream. This weekend, this is another one. I think I'm really so happy <laughs> <laughs> with that consistency. <laughs> the consistency is really there for now. I hope it really continues like that. But I really appreciate everyone who has been very patient with us. I know the first stream, we had to discard it because of a few technical issues. Sometimes it's beyond control. Sometimes, you know, technology goes beyond you. <laughs> but nevertheless, we are here with you guys. And of course, we're here to discuss with you so many things. Yeah, you can hear us. That's amazing. <laughs> See, sure. the silver said the same thing. Yeah. From football now on to business. business. I told you. <laughs> so I try most to... of you have been watching. Yeah, I'm sure most of them are still watching the post match. Okay. But so this was scheduled without thinking about this match. We thought this match was going to be over much earlier. Uh, yeah, yeah. But. Uh, I'm just yeah. happy we won. So we're going to get on to farming business. Um, please, you could start. I've already started talking. I've already started. I was telling them to let us know where they're watching us from. Someone is saying she's watching from, she's watching from Texas, but mm. originally from Kenya. Kenya. That's Texas. amazing. Thank you so much. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for being patient. Of course, the reasoning for the schedule of this stream here is to accommodate all our people. Because when you go to analytics, you have so many people in the US, in Europe, then also in Uganda, of course. Then we also have so many friends of ours in Kenya. Shout out to you guys. Kenya is great. Yeah, Kenyans really support us. They always watch our videos. Then we also have so many people who are not subscribed to our channel, mm. but they do watch our videos. I know. That is so sad. So for those who have not really hit that red button, of subscription please just subscribe it's free of charge by the way and also something that i wanted to put out there on live streams if you have a question that you want you know us to answer because most of you really call us for consultation and you have specific questions that you want us to consult with you live streams can be good as well but you should also do super chat so actually we can be able we can be able to you know answer your questions immediately when you do super chat stickers and all that that is a way for you to come through easily so that we can answer your questions very 
very fast. So those are some of the advantages of the live streams, I think. Doctor, what do you think? I think the live stream is more interactive. Uh, a lot of the times we get to, you know, shoot content at the farm and we make videos, but it's always great to actually sometimes, you know, do this yeah. as a way to actually get instant questions and answers. answers yeah. Because many of you that actually watch our channel, sometimes it could be a little difficult to get a hold of us because we have so many things going on. So that's why I like doing this to me is also important because we can answer your questions directly. You know, this is our way to, I guess, connect more with you guys as well as show our appreciation. So I actually, I actually enjoyed this quite a bit myself. The last live stream was very entertaining. I enjoyed it myself. I hope it's fun. <laughs> it's going to be as fun, more fun as well, because, you know, interacting with people who really show appreciation. You know, most people don't really even write comments mm -hmm. on the videos, but mm -hmm. maybe they just call us and say, oh, Tina, Brockton, we really appreciate what you guys are doing at Value Farm. Such comments really motivate us and even inspire us to even do better at the farm. And even to do these live streams, Grafton has always been on my neck about it. That why don't you? so no. I'm here to be blamed for that. <laughs> but I'm very surprised you're actually taking accountability I am. Yes, I am. for the lack of consistency with the live streams. The live streams. Yeah. But it's just because of our schedule sometimes we don't have rest and it is just so hard sometimes, but we really appreciate you guys so much. Someone is saying that you guys inspire me a lot. Thank you so much. Have you started a farm? Are you a farmer out there? What are you doing exactly at your farm? It's those who have been inspired and started something. Leave your comments as well so that we can know what you guys are up to, what you guys have already started with. Because, you know, we have beginner farmers out there. Whenever they see our videos, most of them, by the way, when you go back, if you go to the analytics, people go back to the first first videos to watch, which is really good. I appreciate that, and I really commend everyone who has done that, whereby you've gone back to the old videos and seen the progress, seen how we have done everything. Guys, that is the way to go. And if you're a farmer out there, never get scared of starting something. As long as you have the skills, as long as you have the, the zeal, you know, the inspiration, why can't you begin something? Do not get scared or do not be, you know, interfered by other people who think maybe farming is difficult, maybe because they failed before. This this is just for us. If in case you have the capability, why not start it? You know what's crazy? Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with a really, really good close colleague of mine. Mm -hmm. In fact, this morning as I was waiting to go meet with our partner Stephen. Mm -hmm at Village Mall and the the base of the basis of the chat was simple. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to business, when it comes to being an entrepreneur, some people are born with that spirit. Yeah. Some people, you know, are naturally more risk takers than others. Mm -hmm. But then we were talking about how the majority of some of the world's greatest businesses are never created mm -hmm. because they die in some and 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 the, just the thought process, right? Because mm -hmm. there's, believe it or not, someone has already thought of solution for some of the world's greatest ailments, right? Mm -hmm. But they've never taken it from just the, the thought process, the planning process. They never get off the sideline to actually get in the game. Mm -hmm. And so the world's greatest ideas are dying each and every single day, every minute of the day, because most of the people who come up with those brilliant ideas, either A, don't have the funds, B, don't have the support, C, they don't have the confidence to start something. And that's what it is when it comes to any business, particularly the farming business, guys. There's been so many misconceptions about farming and farmers from around the globe, like from in terms of what we know. When we travel even to Kenya, uh, especially Kenya, shout out to all our, our, our peeps nice. in Kenya, friends, colleagues. Some of the richest. Someone is saying the voice is a bit low and far. Low and far. Okay, 
Oh no, we don't. We're not wearing mics. We're doing a live stream from the computer. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. So I'll try to speak louder. So when I traveled to Kenya, especially the first time when we went to the other side, when we went to Nyanyuki, yeah. right? Remember that trip to Nyanyuki? Yes. And I was so impressed by what I saw from Kenyan farmers. The level of scale, the level of organization, I mean, it's remarkable, right? And it also woke me up and actually motivated me even more mm -hmm. because in Kenya, you know, you see if somebody's growing flowers, they go all in they go with the flowers, right? And then when you go to someone that actually, like we visited a few farms that were selling sheep and the, the level of professionalism, process, from the way they divide up the herds and how they, they actually uh, graze the sheep and the people that are watching mm -hmm. specific sections of the farm and the ranch, uh, ranches that we visited, it was remarkable. So when I came back to Uganda, <laughs> It, it, it showed me personally how much further we need to go just to get even with Kenyans, right? With Kenyan farmers, right? Within the agri space. Um, but it also, you know, gave me that extra push mm -hmm. to raise our game that much higher because we need to, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of farms that we go to visit and the primary concern is, well, how do we do this cheaply? Mm -hmm. Instead of not necessarily because they don't have the money, it's just been ingrained in them, you know, that, okay, let's just run our business, you know, on a shoestring budget. Not because they're not able to afford it or they don't have the capability. They just think, okay, this is the way. Prime example. Most of the goat farmers, when we go to their farm, most of their goats are living on the ground. And then they wonder why they have such a high mortality rate for the kids that are just dying. Like more than 50% of the kids that are born at the farms are just dying left, right, and center. And then when you visit the farm or when they call for consultation, the first question I would typically ask when they bring something like that up, okay, so what type of structure do you have? How far off the ground is the goat structure? Do you maintain a vaccination schedule? And typically, the first two answers are typically no. And then once you get the no's on the first two answers, you can just stop right there because nothing else <laughs> is going to be up to code if the first two primary, you know, uh, I guess, needs for a successful good farmer is to have adequate housing, elevated warm, have a kid's unit within that goat structure. Most people literally, you know how many people reach, reached out? Um, these are smart, intelligent, capable people. And the first thing they tell oh my gosh, my goats are actually growing, but they currently stand in the living room of my house or in the <laughs> garage of, yeah. of my house. Even like in the village in houses, the village, right? Yeah, so they have this additional storage yeah. space, right? So instead of actually you know, having a structure, even if it's made out of cheap, I guess, more affordable mm -hmm. materials, right? The least you could do is just elevate that off the ground. Because I don't know if you guys have ever smelled um, um, ammonia. Ammonia is a very okay. strong chemical itself. And urine, after it sits dormant for some time, stagnant, it turns into ammonia. And so if you can take a bottle of ammonia, pour, pour some in a cloth and put it over your face. Your face. Oh my you don't God. even have to put it all the way. Just, just bring yeah. it close enough. Now imagine if you're like a small goat, barely two to three weeks old, you know, you don't really understand how to get away from that smell. And particularly if these goats are being held in a house that's overly crowded, there's no way to escape. There's no way to move. And that ammonia, typically, a lot of the time, they end up going blind. But most of the time, they just end up dying because their respiratory system at that age is very fragile. It's not just fragile for the kids. It's fragile for your goats in general. You understand? So these are some of the basic things that we talk to people about all the time. However, they can have the money to go spend 
like forty thousand dollars to buy a brand new double cabinet, <laughs> but they're not gonna spend two thousand or three thousand dollars to build a proper housing structure for their most important part of the venture, which is the actual lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So I often find that mind-boggling to me. What about you? I remember one time in and this family, I remember, when we told them, like, we're buying, we bought so many goods from them. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, we had conversations with them. They asked us about the structures, how they are. And I think, surprisingly, one of their sons had watched our videos mm-hmm. and told the mom how our structures work. Mm-hmm. Then the mom was like, ah, that is wasted of money. Why would, why would they build such structures? In fact, goods are supposed to be on the ground. On the ground. Then the, the dad had even to come and visit her farm mm-hmm. to check exactly how the structures were. Mm-hmm. So when that guy came to the farm, when he saw the structures, he was like, ah, this is just wasted with money. You guys are spending <laughs> too much money building all these fancy structures here, yet goats are supposed to be down. They're supposed mm-hmm. to be on the ground, which is really like the olden ways of farming. And they didn't know so much about it as well. So he was even convincing like our, you know, our people around that time, like oh, you guys are just spending so much money, but this is all good farming. Everyone can do it the normal way. You guys are just elevating this and maybe showing off. But we're like, okay, this is not how it is then. But even still, they had some structures where the kids were a little bit elevated. elevated. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the part that I just don't understand, right? So the same the same group that came to the farm chastising us for actually building structures up to code, they also had structures at their farm where they kept their kids completely off the ground. And so talk about hypocrisy. But um, the, the, other part, the other point I actually wanted to make here is I just want to make sure that we get this accurately. It is possible to actually raise your goats on the ground to some degree, providing that you are at a high elevation. So if you're blessed to actually have wide enough open spaces and you have hilly land and you're on the mountains where the goats, when they urinate, it would naturally just roll down and get away from the goats, it's feasible, you understand? So if you have that kind of setup, that's why most people you know, they typically, if you into small ruminants in general, they typically like to buy land that is naturally healing. Mm-hmm. That is that has the not the rocks naturally are there. So when the ghosts are jumping from stone to stone, mm-hmm. it naturally shapes their hooves. Yeah. You know, so it's possible to do that if you have that type of terrain. But most of us don't have that. You understand? So it's a double-edged sword. You could be on the mountain. And yes, in terms of diseases, in terms of worms, in terms of some of these other natural additional challenges that you would get from a lower plateau land, you will not experience that on the mountaintop. However, you know, what's good for the goose is not always good for the gander because you can have the advantage there by being on top of the mountain, but by the same token, you will, at times you're going to run into challenges to find feeds to, to feed your animals, right? So you can have all the space in the world. You could be on top of the mountain, and that mountain could be absolutely bone dry, particularly when you get into the drier part of the season. And you can't just go and plant grass. You can't plant your brocaria on the rocks on the mountain. So it's a double-edged sword. You know, on one hand, it's good. On the other hand, it comes with its challenges. But if you have a controlled situation, particularly you have the proper housing, you have enough acreage, then you could essentially solve most of your issues with proper management and a proper plan even before you get your lifestyle. Okay, so in her mom is in Uganda. She thinks things cannot thrive in our land. She's, she starts by stocks on a small scale but experiences death from entire stock. How can one access your so many solutions? So she, so um, the mom, Liam is in the house. Mm-hmm. Hi, Liam. Liam. So her mom don't think raising pigs in you <laughs> that's possible. So there's a reason for that. Um, this and I, let me see if I can break it down for you. Well, you educate the people. Why do some? So 
why 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 are some of those why are most of the pigs dying when they make it to that facility where they are? Please line up. There are so many reasons mm -hmm. why pigs can die. First of all, if they like management, how you're taking care of these pigs, mm -hmm. then of course also the genetics that you have, mm -hmm. if they're inbred, mm -hmm. the possibilities of them even being you know dying immediately after birth, mm -hmm. they just take them out for a short time and they die, then also the, um, what is that, if they're not kept very well, in the housing as well, they can easily get diseases and die. Swine fever is here when you just allow people to get into your houses easily, when you buy food from the, from, mm. from the what, from the restaurants, mm -hmm. then come and feed them, that is just the easiest way for you to transmit, to bring diseases to your farm. So there's so many things. And we mentioned this in so many videos about how the possibilities of pigs die easily. So you could easily go there and watch them. The the most obvious ones, all great points by my partner here, by my business partner. But I think what most people don't realize is how crucial it is. Mm -hmm. Guys, let me just make sure, I hope whoever finds this video later on on a rebroadcast, mm -hmm. please understand, you may love your pastor. <laughs> you may love the elderly person in your village or in your town who has pigs. You may even love your cousin and your aunts and them that are raising pigs, right? Just because they have stock, not all livestock are good stock, right? So... You like I, I I remember when we went to visit a farmer that was in Kasanga T that area, Busika, Busika, and Busika, right? So this gentleman, he was definitely one of our subscribers. We actually went onto his property, we visited, and while they were still in the process of building the structure for their pigs, right? So what ended up happening when we got there, you know, he had already cemented the floor. And then the troughs were also on the ground. And so we tried our absolute best to educate him why he should not use the lower trough <clears throat> to just get a very basic nipple drinking system in order to maintain enough water for his, enough clean water for his pigs to thrive, right? And then we also advised him on using IMO because his primary home was less than how many meters away? from the big structure just like within the whole thing. imagine just crossing your front yard right mm -hmm. like i mean i would say in terms of american football it was 10 yards away mm -hmm. first and 10 <laughs> 10 yards away and so i told him i said hey man since your residence is just a few feet away mm -hmm. you might want to highly consider switching from this concrete to imo because if you keep it like this when the wind blows and you don't have IMO, which is an digital microorganism, right? You're gonna really, really feel the pain. So, but this guy was extremely hard-headed. And I remember so distinctly, before he received his pigs, we asked him, so where are you getting your pigs from? He was like, oh, my pastor. I have a pastor friend who has pigs. I've already, you know, I'm gonna buy my stock from him. And he said, are you sure you're spending all this money on this structure? You know, even if you don't get it from us, but you should go to a reputable breeder and just get quality stock. What happened? Went to the pastor, got the pigs, and guess what? The rest is so predictable. So a lot of the times, right, when people are selling their animals, sometimes they sell it to you for cheap because they know those animals, not only are they local, but they can't even tell you which male pig side those piglets so they just selling you whatever they have they don't care about the overall vigor about the overall quality of the stock because there's a very big difference between you buying parenting stock whether it's in poultry whether it's in and in, in, in pigs whether it's in goats versus you actually having the offsprings particularly in poultry and in pigs because the more that so produces piglets, right? The, there's a natural dilution, right? From the offsprings, from that main parenting stock. 
you know, there comes a time where the more piglets that saw produces, those third and fourth generation piglets that come from that so are not meant to be bred. That they are meant to just be simply for meat and meat production only. But when you go to unreputable farmers, they won't even sell you a, 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 a piglets from a so that's been in production for four years, for five years. They will still sell you those piglets and then you go to a farm, you see a giant so, and you think like, wow, this is what this piglet came from? I'm gonna end up with a super giant just like this mom. But in reality, by the time you take it to your farm and then you're wondering, but well, wait a minute, how come this pig is also not growing? Why is it taking so long to grow? These are all the extra unmitigated factors that unless you are aware what you're getting, that's how you end up with inferior stock. And inferior stock costs you so much money because you're thinking like, oh, maybe I need to feed it more. Maybe I need to change the formula. <laughs> maybe you spending no, you're more. spending so much money, but then yet the truth of the matter was it where you got the initial stock from. That is so true. I remember there was some formula to do with it. I think she had the beans, but when you asked her about the beans, they didn't know anything. She, had, she was like, ah, at least what I know, these are exotic. <laughs> That's all they could tell you. <laughs> these are exotic things, right? Here. And yeah. you see how they are healthy. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I've had this one for some years now, mm -hmm. and they're giving me piglets. So, like, but you don't know, like, the breed where you got it. I was like, I was just gifted from a friend, but what I know, these are large white. Because now every pig, every pig is a large white. Is a large white when they don't know. When they don't know, yeah, that is the most common one. That only large white is white. As long as it's white, that is large white. And, and some that people is come to your farm if your pig have one black spot mm -hmm. even on the nose, mm -hmm. they won't take it. They won't take it. That was something <laughs> that we faced. Whereby you know the spotting, mm -hmm. which is common with pigs. Whenever it's like bath marks mm -hmm. in, in humans, we also have bath marks. So pigs also have bath marks sometimes. So when someone, when you tell someone maybe a breeder maybe has a bath mark somewhere, you'll be like, I, I want it when it's really pure. Pure white. <laughs> That's what I'm going to take. In fact, there's someone who really wanted to get piglets from us. They wanted to get females, but they were they had a boar at their farm. So I was like, so which boar do you have exactly? I was like, ah, I won't lie to you. <laughs> 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 but I think it is large white. <laughs> so I was like, are you sure? Did you get it wrong? Right. I was like, no, it is my dad. My dad actually has also a pig farm, so he gave me one of his boys. But what I know, it is a large white. So if you can also give me, you know, other breeds to to breed with mine at my farm, then that is going to work out for me. For that person, I told him seriously, you need to really be careful with what you're taking because you may take good genetics from here, then you take to a bad boy or something that is not up to standard. And you're going to really not benefit from, you know, from the breeding process. So you need to be very, very careful from where you go to. It is not easy to just trust people, especially farmers who don't have any record. Because that particular woman that you went to, she didn't have any record. Oh my god! She gosh. had everything off. Let, let me. I remember. Do you remember this lady in question here? Yeah. Remember, like initially in the beginning when we were just trying to source pigs, right? Source pigs, yeah. And we went to that particular female. Um, uh, um, far, um, farmer, and she was talk about dishonesty. And there's a, there's a point to this story. I'm sure it's a, just bear with me for a moment. Mm -hmm. So we had we saw the, the the stock. They looked pretty good. This was like a early early days, like when we were still learning about what to do and what not to do. So we actually went. She was a highly regarded breeder in yeah. the area so we went to her farm reserved i think four piglets from this yeah. lady left left the deposit they call it booking here yeah and then i was back in the states and then tina went to pick up the piglets the piglets the breed type that we reserved mm -hmm. she literally sent tina back with something completely different, different. lied to tina it was like no 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 he didn't reserve Durox. <laughs> reserve these piglets here. And so then when I got back from the US and I saw the pigs, 
I was like, but well, wait a minute. I thought you brought back the Duras. Yeah. 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 And I was like, no, they're supposed to be Duras. What do you mean? And so fast forward like seven months later, the same farmer wanted to sell her male pig, right? Yeah. And she actually called us hoping that we can help her <laughs> find someone or find a market, so to speak. And I was like, wait a minute, you lied on me. You lied to my partner. You think I'm actually going to put my name and reputation out there for you to actually help you find a client when we know you are a profound liar? Why would we assist you in, in, in this endeavor? You know, so it pays to be honest. It pays to just tell your clients the truth because you never know. Even this past week. Is a perfect example of good, good ethical and integral based practices can help you mm -hmm. because we sold pigs to this one gentleman. Yeah. I'm going to say not even like four months ago. Yeah. And then when it was time for him to come buy his goat, guess what? He could have gone somewhere and so find those else. that were of lesser quality. That was a bit more affordable. But when it was time to come by his ghost to introduce to his flock. After speaking to him on the phone, flat out told me, you know what? I couldn't in good conscience go anywhere else to per to make this purchase because you guys were so great to me. Yeah. You know, when I came to get pigments here the first time around. So when it's time for to get this, this, this goat here, I had to come back to Value Farm. That's what all of us should aspire to be. You know, whether you're a big farmer, micro, medium size, you want your customers when they are away from you, when you're not in the room, for them to just say, you know what, these people at Farm X were honest. They told me the truth. They gave me a good breed. And for that, that's the kind of advertising you can't pay for. Yes, you can market yourself. Yes, you can have social media. Yes, you can even pay to push your ads on Facebook and all these other platforms. But let me tell you something. There's nothing like a warm lead. A warm referral from a happy customer mm -hmm. is like the easiest sale you're going to make because at that point, it's no longer a sale. It's a recommendation yeah. from a satisfied customer. And a lot of our partners in the field don't seem to understand that, that value is more important then getting over on somebody by, by what, like $10 or $20. Would you really want to destroy your reputation in business for just a $20 payday? But so many people do. Wow. I'm sorry. That is very, very common advice that we with so many farmers out mm -hmm. here. Like, honesty is one of the things that, you know, they go away with it. And by the way, we have a video coming up. We discussed more about that. That mm -hmm. upcoming video that's oh, yeah. scheduled for Monday. So wait for that. And guys, turn your notification bells on so that you don't miss out on this information because at least we discuss more and also give you insights on how you can deal with your people, with people who come to buy or purchase animals from your farm. Because this is very common. Most people want to start. People are telling me that I'm not loud enough. Let me just. Speak louder. <laughs> Tina like to whisper. I'm not whispering. I'm really trying to be loud enough. So most people who are really starting farms. Maybe let me move this a little closer. Hold on. Ah, here we go. Boom. Better. Okay. So most people who are starting farms or who are starting livestock farming are always asking themselves, if I need to start this, where is my market going to be? Mm-hmm. Where's your market going to be? That is the first question you have to ask yourself as well before you start anything. Because if you don't know where you're going to sell your animals, you're going to stock animals at your farm, you're going to start your farm, but you don't know where to let them go. Where are you going to sell them to? It starts with you as a person. As, as a person. Because if you're a very trustable person, if you really relate so well with people around you as well, you will definitely get market for your animals. You get market for the, for the goods that you have at your farm. So it is very easy. Of course, we have social media here wherever you market from Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all that. But still starts with you as a person. How you speak to people as well is also very key. So if you're speaking to a client, you speak to a customer coming to purchase from you, 
depicts on how the person is going to take or buy something from you. So these are some of the small things that we take for granted, especially in Uganda here. We have, I, I think this is a comment most people who come to this country say about us Ugandans. Yeah, I'm really so, 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 so sorry about this, but they say our customer care is does quiet. not exist. It's very It small. does not exist. <laughs> oh my God, graft. I'm sorry, you guys will come for me. Yeah. It's okay. But I say this, it comes from a place of love, yeah. right? Because I think, and I've made this point so many times, right? I remember, true story, my first introduction to, to the lack of customer care in Uganda mm -hmm. was when we were first starting to build the, the pig house. Yeah. And I remember I walked into a hardware store, mm -hmm. and the owner of the store, I walked in and I said, hello, good morning. This lady didn't even bother to look up at me. And when she looked at me, she didn't bother to answer. And I said, good morning, like three times for her to finally just look at me and just like, not, she didn't even want to say good morning back, actually. Like I said, hello, good morning. Hi, good morning. And she yes, literally you. just ignored me on purpose. She was just sitting there on her phone. And I remember at that moment, I was like, wow, this person, here I am there to buy so much material, right? And yet this lady is treating us as if she was doing us a favor yeah. by taking our money to come into her store. At first I was so confused by it. I was like, wait a minute. Like how can someone walk into your place of business? Mm -hmm. You don't greet them. There's no smile. You don't look at the person. And the customer actually initiated the greeting because I was excited to be there, mm -hmm. but the owner herself was really? not excited. She didn't care. The fact that she owned the store, she had the material, that was it. Business was done. <laughs> you understand? And so, like, it baffled me. And then, and then like, when we, again, you know, because we actually have mega announcements coming up. Mm -hmm. And it's not about staffing. It's about, like, how the company itself is growing and expanding. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we let you guys know, the main focus for us is just to be good customer service focused business people. Because... You never know. You may assist one person today that might not be able to afford to buy anything from us today. Yeah. But if you treat that person with dignity, respect, at the end of the day, that same person might come over with such a warm and fuzzy feeling and a level of appreciation because you show them appreciation for even reaching out to you. That could be the one customer. And I can see your biggest customer. But... For some reason, that part of business in this country, I think they know. I'm not gonna say, it's not, I, I can't, I'm not gonna discredit my fellow Ugandan brothers and sisters and say they don't know any better because I think they do. I think they do. It's just ingrained in them. Maybe it's just the approach. Maybe it's just a lack of care. Maybe it's because the ingredients or the materials that we need is so scarce throughout the country, they feel as long as they have it in the store, it's good enough. You come, take it or leave it. The idea of them giving you a straight price, and this is another thing I really despise about in terms of doing business here at times. I always feel so, more, so much more comfortable when we walk into a store and then all of the prices are on display. If you ever come to Uganda, for those of you that are not Ugandan, especially those that are in the diaspora. When you walk into a store and you don't see any prices prominently displayed, it's not clear, just understand that store is not meant for you. I mean, technically speaking, it's a trap. They're setting for you who are, who are not familiar with the tactics that they're going to use. I'll never forget when I wanted to buy an office chair. We went to buy furniture. You remember that time? I crossed the street. I was looking for an office chair, you know, one that would be ergonomically correct and comfortable. And we walked into this store where they actually have very nice, nice office chairs. And I remember just asking the young lady who was in charge of the floor. I was like, oh, how much is this chair? She looked at me. It was like, oh, that chair is $600. And I was like, what about that chair? 
seven hundred dollars. And I was like, "Well, how do you know? There's like so hundreds of chairs here. Where, where, where's the price?" She said, "Oh, I know. I know the price." But in reality, they're just waiting for you to come in, and they do this to Kenyans who come to Uganda. Just like when a Ugandan goes to Kenya, they get the foreign treatment too. They, you, 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 how did that feel when they did that to you in Kenya? When you walked into the shops and you were getting the funny, the, the funny prices, how was that feel? So funny. So, <laughs> so terrible. Speak up a little bit. I was really so bad. I felt so bad about it. It wasn't nice at all. And you always ask me, how does it really feel? Yeah. Yeah. Because 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 when I used to come, when I used to raise those concerns to you. To mass men, to some of the other members of our team, mm. you guys used to look at me as well as if I was just complaining. Mm. But in reality, when it's being done to you, exactly. it does not feel good. Exactly. So we, I, I make this point to come back to the original point here. When you are doing business, particularly within the space that we're in, we have a price list. We have a price list for our, our pigs. We have a price list for our goats. Mm. That way it's fully transparent. You ask me, hey, if you reach out to Tina or to myself, you're like, okay, so how much is how, how much for the piglets? How old? The breed type? We have the list, and that list, obviously, due to inflation and also due to the fact that we are enhancing the genetics that we have, that we keep importing to try to get better and improve as a company, those prices may alter, yeah. but when they do, we make the changes, and you guys see why. That's why we share everything with you guys, right? You'll see why, you know, those prices may shift, okay? But then ultimately, we are just very straightforward and appreciate every bit of business that we do, no matter how big, no matter how small, because some, some people might just have the money to just buy one goat. Some people might have the money to buy one pig or piglet, Right? But it's the same people that will come back like six months later and buy like 15. 15. Or come to your farm and like, hey, I need 100 goats. Mm -hmm. So you better treat all your customers, even though they might not have the money to buy today, you should cherish them as if they're buying a 1,000 animals from you every time they call you or visit your farm. That's the nugget I like to leave today. Wow, that's amazing. Another thing for the business owners or farm owners, you should also train your workers. Train people that you leave at your businesses as well. Because most times, it's not, you don't have to blame like the business itself. Sometimes why businesses fail, it is because of the people that you put into the business to work for mm -hmm. you. So these people take everything for granted. But at the end of the day, end of the month, they expect their salary. Full salary. Exactly. So these people take everything for granted. They don't want to work. They're like forced that just that work for a <laughs> salary. That is very, very common here. When you enter into a shop, when you enter into maybe a buffet, a bed shop, you want some medication, this and that, you find someone seated. You ask about this. They get annoyed. They get so pissed with you, yeah. yet you really bring money. You want something from them. And now make it worse if it, that is the only shop available in that location. Oh, my gosh. So the pride is really very high. So business owners, you should always make sure that you train your people so that they can benefit from your businesses. Because at the end of it all, you may be investing so much money into your business, but you're not benefiting from it. Customers are running away from your business, and you don't know the reason as to why. Everyone is running away. Someone is going to your neighbor, going to other people to purchase. Yet it is the people that you have employed who are really not enthusiastic about everything that they're doing in your, fa in your farm, in your business, in your shop. You know, you go to a place, you go to a restaurant, for example. Some you walk into the restaurant here, then someone just sits, looks at you, doesn't even welcome you. Then you find a seat, you mm. wait for over like five minutes without someone coming to attend 10, you. 15. Exactly. That is very common, but most owners do not know about that. You leave maybe your manager there, the manager also doesn't care as long as they get their money because they expect their salary. The salary is not negotiable because if you already stated the salary for someone, it's not negotiable in this country. Whether you've made money, whether you've not made money, you have to pay them at the end of it all. So we need to train our workers. If it needs time for you to talk to them, get someone who is skilled enough to train these people, it is better. It is good because some people even forge. People have CVs. 
they have experiences. Yet they 90% know. of it is fake. Exactly. Right. They will tell you, I've worked here and there, I've worked in this farm, I've worked in this fake. business. But I have all the skills. So you entrust your business with this person who does not have any skill at all. Who is learning from your business? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing about it, and you know the, you know the thing as business owners, especially in the farmer space, right? Yeah. What, uh, what angers me, for because I know so many farmers are being taken in by these fraudulent managers who yeah. pretend to know. A lot of the times, all that person would have to tell you, you know what? I'm not sure why your goats are dying. Maybe we should bring in a vet <laughs> yeah. to advise us. Advise us but that happens. person will convince you, even though they have no clue as to what they're doing. But they will die on that mountain of knowing and pretending. You could come to the farm and you're like, wait a minute. You know, what's wrong? Why come this goat here? The stomach is so, the belly is so big. Why is the fur looking like that? Yeah. And then the, that fake manager will promise you. Ah, oh, you know, we are treating it. Mm. Ah, this one is, I think it's improving. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen it three days ago. And then you leave, you're thinking like, okay, uh, this is being addressed, or you think it's being addressed, yes. and then you go about your business, and then <laughs> that next morning, they send you a picture of a dead kid. And then you're like, but wait a minute, I thought this one was getting better. Yes, but then they will perpetuate the lie. And a lot of the time, the issue could be simply as the... The animals being dewormed yeah. or being vaccinated, you understand, for PPR or for whatever, you know, um, regional, you know, records you need to maintain in terms of code with your vaccination for the area you're located in, right? They just don't care because at the end of the day, that money is not coming from their paycheck and they know, they already look at you like you're the enemy because as the owner or you rich in their eyes, even though you could be a struggling <laughs> <laughs> Just like they're struggling, but you're trying to find another way out, out of the fog. You know, you, you, you know what? Let me leave the corporate world alone. Let me try my hand at this. Yeah. And you put your all into your business. But that person you call a manager will literally be there looking at you like, oh, this one is rich. He's got land. He's got all these goats here. Mm -hmm. And the jealousy is also another yes. factor that people don't talk about. Mm -hmm. So. How do you combat that? Easy. Don't trust any manager that works for you. Do never, ever, ever appoint an overall manager at your farm. And if you do, any sense of dissidence yeah. from any staffer, do not let it fester. If you ever come there, you start seeing your employees, they're not enthusiastic about seeing you. Yeah. They don't want to greet you. They're too proud they're or, proud. or they, they have an attitude. What you do? You should always have your roster fully trained, trained, trained with existing people at your farm, and you should never stop looking for talent. You should constantly be hiring or talking to people that actually have workers with good reputation that you can get true referrals. Don't just go on somebody's farm and like, oh, that, oh these goats are looking amazing. <laughs> Let, I need, I need his manager. No, no, no. This manager needs to come work for me. Work for me. Don't know but what, what you don't know, the, yes, that, that owner might be the one giving that quote-unquote fake manager the blueprint on what mm -hmm. to do, like we did, like, we, like we've done in the past, yeah. right? Like we giving that person a blueprint. Hey, do you know, this. do A, do, do B, C, D, do the rain seed is coming, prepare for this prepare for that and things are working yeah. but then here you are you don't know anything you, you show up to somebody's farm and then you pluck this person out and guess what that man is going to tell you oh it's me i'm in charge of everything here i'm running this whole department and then you go they go to your farm then the rain season comes and then you wonder why are you losing five goats a day Maybe seven goats are just dropping dead every day. Yeah. One day you could see a healthy goat walking around, and then 10 minutes later it just ceased. Okay. It's done. Why? Because that fake manager knows nothing. Most of the time, they let you, the owner, do all the work. Yeah. You spend all the money. You spend all your time researching, educating yourself. Then they then pretend how you running your business mm -hmm. is their sole reason 
while your company is going somewhere. And yet when they get to your farm, God bless your heart. Because after about 30 days when the honeymoon wears off, and then you're wondering, how come my ghosts are looking so skinny? And you know what that person will try to tell you? Ah, they haven't yet gone crazy yet. <laughs> you should sue them in the evening when they're coming back from grazing. And then you come back and you're looking at the pictures. And then you come back in the evening. And then you go in the goat house. You see goats that should have already been fat from feeding all day. Yeah. And then they still have that indent rib yeah. look. And they look like they haven't eaten for like exactly. a week mm -hmm. or a week and a half. Mm -hmm. And then there's always an excuse. And I remember somebody was trying to tell me, ah, what? what no, no. It's a parasite. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's some kind of parasite. Maybe we should vaccinate again. They're just guessing, grasping the straws. And this is something else a lot of fake managers love to do. Because it's not their money. They're always demanding medicine. They're always demanding, you know, oh, we should buy this. Oh, we need to get that. Because it's not their money and they don't care. And when you do lose your animals, yeah. because it's not coming out of the paycheck, in fact, it gets to a point where there's no even no remorse. Yeah. You just come to the farm. If you're not there for one day, you come back the next day, you're just finding dead bodies, carcasses everywhere. Mm -hmm. And they don't even bother. They're like, oh, my gosh, we're so sorry. This happened. That happened. They just don't care. So it's a part of the business. We're not sharing this with you to scare you. We're sharing this with you to prepare you. You understand? No matter how sweet your manager may seem, no matter how knowledgeable that person might be, when it comes down to your business, you have to make sure everyone on your staff know you're the boss. The manager or an assistant manager or a department manager works there at your pleasure at your behest. You understand? Because if you don't make that delineation early enough, trust me, you are walking into a mutiny when you try to take the reins of your business back. If you let a manager come onto your farm and take charge of everything and everyone, mm -hmm. what's going to happen? The moment you try to discipline that manager, they're going to organize an exodus at your farm. They're going to try to hurt you and the worst way possible, they will organize a mass walkout because that's how they feel that they can hurt you. A lot of these people don't care about your animals. You understand? They don't care whether your animals live or die. So then what do you do? You treat everyone accordingly, right? You treat them with respect, especially if they give you that respect back. But then the people that they are overseeing mm -hmm. need to know that even though this person is here physically, you're still in charge, okay? What you say goes. And if you don't have that under control, believe me, you're in trouble. I know that was long-winded. I'm done talking. No. no. We take the <laughs> there's race. a lot My to talk gosh. about. No, we shall talk a lot Any about question this. in the chat? No, there's even something I wanted to, to put out there. Be aware of people or workers or managers who work when you Only are there, farm. yeah. If you're off the ground, Work stops. Everyone stops. Everyone does whatever they want to do. So if you're from out there, be prepared. Just know that some of these people here are going to be working when you're available. When you're not there, they're not going to work. And that is very, very common. Then another thing that I also wanted to put out there for some occasions like deworming, vaccinations, it's very advisable for you to be on ground, to be available. So that at least for those days, you're there to really see that every animal is vaccinated. Every animal is the one. Because if you have so many animals at your farm, like goats, some of them will just vaccinate some. Some will not yeah. be taken care of. Yeah. That's when you realize that you're losing out stock. Yet you vaccinated, you bought all the medication, but just a few of them are just vaccinated at your farm. So make sure you're there to count. You're there to help as well. At least be responsible on this because this is so common with so many workers whereby some of them will escape. Like if you have so many goods and one es escapes, they, they, just leave it. they just leave it. They'll be like, ah, it's okay, let's go with others. Let's continue. Head count as well. If you don't know the head count of your animals at your farm, then you're going to really regret why you've been started the farm. 
because most times, especially for free range, you know, kind of mm -hmm. farming, they're purposely two or three in the bush. In the bush, because they are they are and con they're conniving with a lot of the local neighbors. Okay, they they'll go especially when you first wean the kids. If you don't tag and register your kids and you don't know how many goats you have at your farm, especially when you have large numbers. True. And this is especially sad for people who are in poultry. I feel your pain. For those of you who want to get into poultry, let me tell you guys something. You, If you're going to do poultry, eggs, or meat, you better have a cot right next to your poultry house. Mm -hmm. Because the moment you walk off the farm, mm -hmm. your same manager mm -hmm. is the one stealing 10 birds from you on a Monday, 30 birds from you on a Wednesday. And then when you come back, you're like, and then, oh, this one's died, that one died. And then I remember one time a fake manager tried to tell me that one of my ducks drowned in water. It rained heavily. Mm -hmm. So this, this adult duck died. These people really think that they just come up with the most insane, phony excuses, and you just said, what's to accept it? So many of you still have to work in Kampala, we get it, or wherever you are, you might still be in the UK, or you're still planning your return back home, which is fine. However, you should definitely, if you are able, make sure you are around and make sure you just show up at your farm because it's your farm, unannounced, check on your animals, you walk the ground, and if anything don't look right, don't accept any excuse from anybody. You understand? You may give an employee one or two, even three opportunities to correct a certain behavior. But by the time you reach that point, it's over. You understand? Your nostalgia should remain with the, your farm. It should remain with the well-being of your animal. And some of these herdsmen might, you might see a herdsman be slapping a kid. They might be kicking a calf. They might be just beating a cow in the head. When you see stuff like that, that person should be escorted off your farm immediately. You understand? Even there was there were times where I would just see these kids. So we went to, remember when we were buying from Storm Farm? Yeah. This guy was picking up the goats we were selecting and just throwing them. <laughs> do you remember that? Yes, I do. And I was like, I mean, most oh, uh, we've seen uh, them people no, this, but, but, but I'm like, but, but why would you do that? Mm -hmm. Don't do that to the animals. And then they laugh at you because you actually care, you care about, them, about, yes. about how they handling your animal, exactly. how you don't want them to be roughed up or bruised up. It's, it's, it's the most insane thing I've ever seen. You remember, you remember that, right? I've seen that so many times. Well, but people can get shocked when you react like, hey. So in fact, when someone say about it, commented about it, when you like telling them, please be, stop being rough on this animal. Mm -hmm. They're like, eh, this guy cares so much about animals. <laughs> I do care because I because because I want them to have a good life. Exactly. Even though we're planning on ultimately sending them to the goat heaven or but pig heaven, but well, while they are under your care, it's your responsibility to treat them well because many people don't know. Especially even when it's time for you to go slaughter an animal, you know, if that animal is under stress, the quality of the meat changes. Yeah. You understand? Like yeah. if you like, that is true. Uh, and a lot of the time when we that see these guys nice. carrying cows from the village and how they tie these animals in such an inhumane fashion, you can literally see how sometimes they tie the cow's tail yeah. so tight that you can see that it's just in such discomfort. That meat will never taste normal, you know? But that's the thing. Like, like a lot of farmers in this country, they miss that part of the that equation. Part, yes. They that miss it, you know? Because let me tell you something. If you have animals at your farm that are being mistreated, they will never reach their full potential, ever. That is so true. Like for pigs, I've got, we've gone to so many pig farms, oh. and the way they really mishandle these piglets and pigs at the farm, it's, it's it, alarming. It's disgraceful. And even the owners are there, yeah, and they're aware of it, and yeah. they don't even care. Yeah. But that is one of the things us farmers should really learn that you shouldn't be so cruel, so harsh to these animals as well. And you should teach your your people, the people who are working there, 
to always handle them carefully, to be, you know, to be even friends with them. I think you guys have seen some of our videos where we even play with the thickness, we play with all this, you know, to make them more friendly, make, make them more comfortable. But when you walk into a big house and the piglets are shying away, they are running here and there, trust me, there's a problem there. That's when you notice that maybe these piglets are not handled properly at all. But when you see, when you walk to a farm and, you know, kids are coming to you, piglets are coming to you, they are well trained as well. That means these people are really taking good care of this animal. They're healing the animals. That's, yes. that's how you get that. Yeah, someone was even saying that, what about CCTV cameras? Of course, CCTV cameras are very helpful. It's a helpful part of the create the puzzle, but these managers are very, let me tell you something, these, these guys, especially with poultry, Lord have mercy. These people, let me tell you something, we had a fake manager who was stealing from our company, and we knew the theft was going on, so when we would even like confront this person, the the both it's like it got to the point where it was laughable. And that's when I started to get upset because I was like, wait, this person must really think we're stupid. Like, like they literally would look at you in your face and you're like, oh no, mm -hmm. no, it's the same amount of chickens. They just come back at night. Mm -hmm. And you're like, some go, some, some don't where, come back, but yeah, the next day they will come. They, they come back. And then you're like, wait a minute, but that's ridiculous because before you got here, we had this many birds here. There was never this habit of them going, not coming back. And then and then by the time we started doing the head counts, like specifically, yeah. right? Everything. Everything was just like, it just stopped. <laughs> and then miraculously, after that person left the company, the number of chickens just vastly improved mm -hmm. like literally we went from barely having like 40 chickens there to not even buying any more birds right yeah and that specific birds we like the local chickens at the farm yeah. and we literally went from like again having barely 22 23 birds left to having well over 100 within a matter of like 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 six to eight weeks you understand they just came back with a vengeance no eggs were being missing, none of this stuff. So CCTV can help you. Yeah. It's like an assistant because CCTV cameras also have blind spots. And these people will find your blind spot and that camera will provide you with a false sense of security where you think you're fully covered. And yet that's when they're taking that knife to the back of your spine, the spine of your business. And then they're just going to destroy you. They will give you the blood eagle. Okay. For those of you who are Viking fans, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. So, yeah, you just have to be there, man. It's either you there or your wife is there or your husband is there or your son is there or your daughter is there. If you have that, and if you don't have that, then you have to be there. I think that's it. And even another thing about. If you have animals at the farm and you realize the numbers are reducing, mm -hmm. there should be accountability. Mm -hmm. There are some workers, we had this, let me share this with this with, with our fellow farmers. Mm -hmm. Our rabbits. We had so many rabbits at the farm, but at one point, some rabbits were disappearing. The numbers were reducing. And we were really wondering why are our rabbits dis why are the rabbit numbers reducing? So when we intervened, when we called, you know, so many people who are responsible about that mm -hmm. project, some of them were like, oh, some of them died, but no one communicated. No one even said, okay, this one was sick, but they just kept to themselves. So it is always for you to be accountable. Tell, hold those people accountable for whatever, even if it is something has died, they should send for you pictures if you're not at the farm. So that at least you know that, okay, this one died. Or if in, if in case maybe they are sick, they should let you know well in advance. People take this for granted, whereby they, they're like, oh, I'll take care of these animals myself. Even if I don't tell my boss about it, it is okay. Then you keep losing. At the end of it all, it's not going to really be nice as a farmer. Who comes to the farm, especially for telephone farmers? You go to your farm, you've invested, you put your project there, you think, you know, animals are adding up. Animals are multiplying. 
Then you go back and you hear stories. You don't have any accountability. You don't have anything to show that maybe this animal is even that. So it is not really very nice, by the way. Shout outs to Auntie Sarah. I think she's in the chat here. She's one of our biggest fans. Thank you so much Hello, for Ms. coming. Auntie Sarah. <laughs> Auntie S. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you and always supporting us as well. Then there's someone here who's saying, Tobias is saying, my first employee cleaned me up. I wish I knew what you guys are sharing right now. That's why we tell you guys everything. That's the reason why we come here, not just in these live streams, and thank you for sharing. It's because, let me tell you another horrible habit our fellow farmers have in this country. Yeah. They know all of these things. Yeah. Most of the old-time farmers that's been in the business for more than two, three, four, five, up to 10, 15 years, they know oh, all of yeah. these issues. But you know what? Call it shame. Call it pride. Call it dark heart. Right? They will never tell a new farmer coming into the business, what to look for, the signs, what to expect, how to handle your employees. And they know all of these things, right? So, in fact, so many people often ask, why do you guys, why don't you guys charge money for this stuff? Why don't you just put up a paywall, shoot your videos, and make people pay to get this information? For me, I don't want to do that because... The way I look at it, the more people we help, the more feasible it becomes for you sitting in your corporate job that you hate and you working for a boss that's making you miserable. But if you understand how this could be done, right, yeah. then it's easier for you to actually transition into farming. We need more farmers. So if making information available right, is going to make that transition more feasible for more people. I feel as farmers that are actually practicing farmers, mm -hmm. I feel like it's, so, it's, our, it's our way of giving back. Yeah. And to some degree, it's our corporate responsibility to actually provide as much information as possible so that you can find your blueprint into this wonderful world of farming. That is very true. Wow. Let me read something. Someone is saying, Constance is saying, my name is Constance. I'm watching you from Ghana. In fact, I'm learning a lot. Keep educating us with this practical stuff. Which one can hardly find in a classroom? Thank you. I'm going to go get the charger because this laptop is almost it's, dead. I'm <laughs> 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 to get here right now. So, guys, Constant, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. And, of course, having a community, having people like you here makes us really happy to share all this information because... We want more happy farmers out there. We want you guys to be, you know, grateful for all the information that you receive at Value Farm. Because we would be selfish running a farm, but we're not sharing everything with you guys. So I really, I'm really so proud about that, that at least we have this platform right here. And of course, our social media platforms as well, other platforms that we share knowledge with you. It's an amazing thing to share everything with you guys. Then Globe is saying, hi, guys, I have already sent you three emails. You, do you really help people who want to establish in Uganda? Yes, we do help. The thing is, we really get so many messages on Instagram, on all our social media platforms, email, WhatsApp, all that. We do respond to these emails. Sometimes it may not be on time, but we always go back to our emails. We go back to the WhatsApp messages and respond to them. But if it's really very urgent, you can also call. Just call us. We, we have our contacts right there. At least for calls, we can definitely pick up and schedule time. If you really need to come here, establish something, we shall definitely help you. So that is much easier, at least. So make those calls if it's really very, very urgent. If you see that we're not responding on time and it's really so urgent, we can definitely schedule time so that we can have a meeting with you. So sorry about that. Sorry for the bad experience, but we definitely get back to everyone yes we try our best really it's, it's really getting to a point where we need to hire full-time staff mm -hmm. just to monitor mm -hmm. emails mm -hmm. and answer text messages and other messages because it's really a lot i mean we can't always get to everybody immediately but we're doing our best so that's also the reason why we are here on a live yeah to try to answer as many questions as we can yeah. on this forum because we know it's not easy because 
I, we always say this, <laughs> we're not YouTubers masquerading as farmers. We're farmers, farmers that happens to share our journey on YouTube. So if some of you want to do one-on-one -on -one consultation, you want to actually schedule time specifically to discuss whatever your plans might be, you can definitely do that as well. But we try to keep general information, provide as much info as we can, both through our videos, also on, through our other social media platforms, but then by wanting, to, by also making an effort to do these lives more, more frequently, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is another way we're trying to address answering some of your questions. Yes, we have 64 people watching. Please give us a thumbs up. You know, when you like the video, so many people will come and join us. We have so many people who want such information, but they don't have access, or maybe they don't know that this channel exists. So guys, just give us a thumbs up as well so that the, the live stream is recommended to other people, you know, right? And of course, those who have not subscribed, with all this information, <laughs> what are these guys still waiting for? Yeah. Yes, and also to answer your question as well, why we come here live to do live streams, you can always have a pass. Just do super chat. Your question will be seen immediately and we answer it immediately. So we are here to support as well. Then someone was also asking, there's a question I wanted us to answer. It was one of the previous comments up here. I'm trying to look for it. She was asking. Marianne, she was asking, do I need a permit to, to get South African pure bricks from your farm to Kenya? Actually, you will need a movement permit. Mm -hmm. You definitely need to get permission from the Kenyan, from your DVO in Kenya yeah. and the area in which you're going to bring the goat to itself, right? Uh, the short answer to that is yes, but the permit is very easy to come by. As long as the goat actually meet the the actual quarantining period from South Africa to, to Uganda, and even if the goat is here locally in Uganda, and then you have a protocol in place, it shouldn't be difficult to get that animal to Kenya. As long as you have your actual movement permit, and then of course you get clearance from the Ugandan side, which will have to have even before the goat leave the farm, mm -hmm. right? and then you get yours on your side, which is really not that difficult, then yeah, meet you at the border, take your goat, and au revoir, you'll be good. Yeah, so you have to really work hand in hand with your DVOs, mm -hmm. the district veterinary officers in Kenya. Then we also work with ours right here, so authorities matter, because remember this is border to border, so there are different things. You have to have the permit. You have to have the no objection letter as well, so that this animals are permitted to cross over to Kenya. So you have to always, you have to have all the information. If you don't know about it, you can still go to the, um, to, to the offices for agriculture in your district, wherever you are, so that you can get clarity on that, so that you can get all the paperwork so that these animals can be transported easily. But there are so many animals that are crossed to Kenya from Uganda. So not only pure breeds, even the East Crosses, African, the crosses, all these, I know area. fresh cuts basically not fresh cuts. Um, the farmer's choice basically, you know, most of their pigs yeah. that they slaughter come mm -hmm. from Uganda here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Wow, that is really so nice. Yeah, NC Worker is one of our longest viewers. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. It's good well afternoon. Welcome. Oh, okay. Good afternoon <laughs> back 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 home. Yeah, that is so good. Then someone is saying, I'm buying female, two female pigs from you to start a family office. So can I get them already pregnant? Yeah, it's possible to do that. Yeah, I mean, uh, we don't necessarily like to do that because we love our pigs and we don't really want to sell our pregnant souls because those are our parenting stock. The, any pig that we actually allow to get to the stage where they got impregnated, of pigs we've identified to be good enough to be in our breeding program. Yeah. So yeah, the pricing definitely plays a role, but by the same token, just keeping those pigs into our program is definitely something that you know we prefer to do. But if you have a new farmer who's starting out and you want good breeds, and if that's what makes you feel more comfortable, mm -hmm. yeah, we can definitely find a way to work that out for you, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
then what is saying that an East African have to establish or it's only required to partner with the Ugandan? Excuse me? To establish a new business. You have to speak up to it. He's saying, does an East African help to establish a new business or it always required to partner with the Ugandan? You don't necessarily have to partner with the Ugandan if you choose not to, but your company is going to be viewed as a foreign entity, right? But if you want the benefits and you want to get the actual preferential tax treatment locally here in the country, it would behoove you to partner with a local Ugandan. Now, that's easier said than done because you have to find people that you will need to vet, and then you vet that person again, and then it's going to come down to your best judgment, right? But no, uh, it makes things easier for you to have a real Ugandan partner uh, because once you have that, it makes everything that much easier. So I hope that answers that question. Yeah, and also for people who are coming to invest in Uganda, invest in Africa, be careful with people that you choose to partner with and people that you choose to work with. Because not everyone is going to be good, not everyone is going to be trustworthy as well. Do your vet people. Please wrong. stop letting your pastor sell you land. <laughs> because that's like one of the number one ways to get swindled. Not all pastors are bad people, that's not what we're saying. But when you come to Uganda, especially if you're from the diaspora or you're not from here, when you meet a pastor that's trying to sell you land, that should be a red flag. So be careful. Okay, that's all I'm saying. That is so true. Auntie Sarah is saying, please give an update on Dopper Sheep. Also, is a sheep Oh my oh, gosh, the, 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 the Dopper Sheep. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. Because you, you guys need to understand mm -hmm. the way of the world. Let me see if I can find this. A picture? I'm, I, you know, I have, the, <laughs> I have the pictures on deck here. So, for the Dopper Sheep. Hold on there, champ. Hold on. I, I have, okay, I have the okay. proof. Let me see. Here, I know this is kind of bootleg, but you see that? That's a pregnant dopper. All of them are pregnant. And believe me, they're going to be landing very, very soon. We're super excited about that. Not only that, I'm actually uh, planning a trip back to Kenya, yeah. right, to even bring in more female, more ewes. Mm -hmm. And also, we'll be importing actually a couple of rams mm -hmm. from South Africa, yeah. you know, to continue to enhance the portfolio of our sheep. So thank you for that question. In fact, um, the, the farm itself is expanding. You're going to soon see a migration within the farm. Like we actually literally have to build more space, right, to actually completely let the sheep have their section, right, because they, the numbers are growing. Yeah. The numbers are definitely more. So, yeah. So adaptability and... The business that they're was, fully adapted. They're fully adapted. Yeah. In the beginning, it was quite a challenge. Remember mm -hmm. from the environment that they came from to what they got here, it was a little bit difficult. It's very different. Very difficult and it was very different. But right now, the ones that we have, my goodness, champions. They're champions. They're really. Cool. In fact, you guys should see the local enhanced. Have, yeah. Huh? Like we've been crossing crossing them with our East African, with the Ugandan local mm -hmm. sheep. Oh yeah. my God, they look really amazing, really amazing, more improved, and this one is really grow very fast. Super fast. And of course, that is, I think, I think it's, I think sheep is underrated. Sheep farming is underrated in this country. Here's an update. I was speaking to Kenneth the other day. Mm -hmm. Kenneth, who's our good partner, our good yeah. guy, and he was telling me the other day, like two days ago, yeah. how, in a way, he wished he would have focused more on sheep yeah. from the very beginning mm. instead of just going all in on goats. Yeah. At first, this man was trying to convince us. Yeah, I remember ah, that you, should, you remember that? <laughs> He's like, oh, Grafton, you and Tina, you guys are doing too much. Oh you should just focus on goats. In fact, he didn't even want us to get different breeds exactly. of goats. He was like, oh, if you're going to do South Africa, if you're going to do boys, stick with the boys, forget savannas. Do this, do that. But now, mm. I was the one. Mm. I was the believer. Mm. Can I get an amen, sister? Amen. Indeed. <laughs> I was the one that was like, actually, no, bro. I'm getting my sheep. Mm. We ran our test at the farm. 
I know exactly what I want to do. My partner's mm -hmm. behind me. Let's get some shit. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know he even imported white doffers? Are you serious? He even brought in white doffers. Yes. Yeah. They are his farm. So, yeah, that the sheep business in Uganda is it's catching real. on. It's, it's catching on mm -hmm. in a way. And, and so, not realizing it. It's easier to raise sheep than goats. So, it's so much easier. This is what I've been saying from the very beginning. So and the profit easier. margin is high. The quality of the meat is sweet. And the more people that get comfortable with eating sheep, guess what? If you take it seriously today, mm. you might end up being the dominant market shareholder in your whole district. Exactly. When it comes to the sheep business, they grow the so fast. The international market. They're the always asking we... for 700 sheep a week. Uh huh. A thousand sheep a week. <laughs> well, they we put them that. on the airplane to the UAE. <laughs> they want them in the UK. So, yeah, the sheep business. But then that's the sad thing. Many Ugandan people still believe in the myth that Ugandan people don't, don't eat sheep. Eat sheep. Blah. No, they just don't believe they, it. They don't believe yeah. it. So, but it's a big business. But the market is right there. So, I'm sorry, saying that she's going to be a month. She's part of the women's group, and then she will be able to share her that is very nice. Shall definitely get to you as well. Wow. Good business discussion. Amen. Say amen to you. Amen. It's true. <laughs> that is so true. Kamara Chris is saying currently in Poland, learning and finding ways how and where to start my home country. Hope to be at the farm soon and come back. So inspiring business. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. And, you know, You're most welcome. Our pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's also asking how much are the piglets ready? A starter and should get to like how many? Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell them what the prices of the piglets the are. The prices of the piglets depend on the age, age, the breed, the breed as well. So, in case you really want to know the prices, you can still message us so that we can share with you the different prices and the different ages that you can. But they start at 275. It's from 275, yeah. 375, 500. But these are good breeds that you definitely get. So it depends on the breed as well, depends on the age as well. But those are the, the, the range, nice range yeah. that you can definitely get. It. For those who have really bought from us, they're super excited. There's a lady who took from us 13 piglets just yesterday, mm -hmm. and I called her today. She was really very excited. She was <laughs> so happy. Yeah. You know, she was like, oh my God, this thing that's really look really good. Though they are fighting, of course, I had to advise them on how she can go about mm -hmm. it because when they go to a new environment, and yeah. remember, in our structure, we always had their different partitions they depending do. on the size, depending on yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, I told her, you know, those piglets who are not staying all together in one pen. Mm -hmm. So, if you have different sections, please try to separate them, especially depending on the size. Guys, you cannot take a pig that's used to living in a mansion and put it in a condo. You understand? <laughs> For those who know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If they use a certain amount of space and they pen, you can't take them from being spacious with enough room to stretch their legs yeah. and put them into one tiny little box. Yeah. There will always be friction. That is so true. But guys, we really appreciate you so much. It's getting so late and we have an early morning. So I think we should really wind up this yeah, live stream. This is it, yeah. Yeah. For today so that we can come back next time when you have your questions ready be prepared if you want to pass you know what to do but we definitely appreciate each each one of and you and by the way the, guys if you if you have your vf merch mm -hmm. in the states please mm -hmm. take a photo mm -hmm. send it to us on instagram exactly. and of course we'll definitely tweet it out we'll definitely you know respond to those posts because for whatever the reason, it's so sad that we're here in Uganda mm. and the, we don't ship to Uganda from the U.S. Mm. So most of the merch that we have, I have so many friends in America that have Value Farm merch oh, for my yeah. YouTube store, right? Wow, wow. And yet, like here in Uganda, it's so difficult so to ship because of the logistical challenges. Mm. But if you have VF merch, if you have your mug, send us a pic, send it on WhatsApp, put it on Instagram, tag us. You know, and, and show us some love out there. Yeah, that is so true. Someone is really to say, please answer my question. Can someone come and visit your farm? Not at the moment. We are still working on that. And we have always 
shared this with you that when we are ready, we shall definitely announce everywhere. We shall let you guys know when we shall be ready to host you as a farm because we are very, we are organizing on our biosecurity, organizing everything to be very comfortable for you and us exactly to come on a farm. But when we are ready, we shall let you know. But for now, we are not hosting anyone on a farm. Sorry about that. But that's going to change soon. Though. Soon. Yeah, it will change soon and you guys will definitely. Because we have a home for you there, we have places that you're going to have accommodation. Then the training center is going to be ready for you to come and have lessons, to come and have trainings, to also have an experience at Valley Farm. So don't worry about that. Then someone can you meet in person with someone who comes to Uganda? In Kampala. In Kampala, yes, we can do that as long as it's a rent. When you come, let us know. We schedule a meeting and we can meet in person as well. So that can be organized as well. But guys, we really appreciate you guys so much. If you've been watching this live stream from when we started, thank you so much. Please do not forget to go to our social media platforms as well. Instagram is Value Farm UG. Facebook is Value Farm. TikTok is Value Farm. Please go show us some love as well. Follow us that side as well because, you know, our family is growing. We shouldn't only grow on YouTube, but also on those other platforms, guys. And do not forget to tell a friend to tell a friend, you know. Value Farm is here to provide all the information free of charge mm. and you're not even subscribed. Some of you are not even subscribed yet. Your button is still red. I don't know why you guys so, are not subscribing. That's so price sad. is free. Mm? <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad. We are here sharing everything, but at least appreciate my subscribing by, by telling your friend, you know what? Check out this channel here. See what they are doing right here. Inspire others as well. You might be an inspiration to your family members as well. And you may be the one to change everything in your family with your friends as well. So it's advisable for you to always share this, this video. Someone just mentioned sheep go visit Senegal. Yeah, we want the legume sheep here mm. for sure. Mm. We love that breed. I actually spoke to a young lady from Senegal earlier today. We did yeah. a, a, about a two hour consultation and we were talking about her local sheep. Just happened to be one of the best in, the, in, in all of Africa, if yeah. not the world. Yeah. So she's very fortunate when it comes to that, right? Yeah. And so that's 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 not we're not a stranger to the living. One day, mm. we hope we can bring them here. That is true. Yeah. We've talked about that, but one day we manifest. We shall mm -hmm. definitely get them in Uganda. And those one, the people have been asking us, have you brought them so far? Not yet. It's not, not that easy. It's not easy. <laughs> But when we have the capability, when we have the chance to do that, we shall definitely bring them to Uganda mm -hmm. as well. And you'll know. For us, we don't hide. Mm. <laughs> we don't hide from that. Although Tina's been hiding something very big at the farm, but I'm not going to say anything. We'll just show the people when the time comes. When the time comes. Yeah. When the time comes, and I told you that, Shh, for now. <laughs> 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 then we shall bring out there. But really appreciate you guys so much. Okay. I think they want to start a farm too. That is why I was asking because your farm is amazing. Oh, okay, that is fine. But we really appreciate you guys so much. Let us call it a good night. Please subscribe. See you in the next video. We have a video scheduled Monday. For Monday. So please go. Turn on your the notifications. Share with everybody you know. If you can come to the premiere, please, that would be so nice to see you guys, to chat with you guys on premiere as well when the video is premiering. So, guys, we really appreciate you guys. Till next time, I hope we shall do this live, live streams again. Hey. I hope. That's but, on you, my friend. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a good night. Don't leave that. Bye.